the first session of the 2020 Ohio Beef Cattle Nutrition and Management School was hosted by the Ohio State University Extension Beef Team on January 29th in Woodville and repeated the following evening in Newark, Ohio. During that first session, Dr. Francis Fluharty, Ohio State University Professor Emeritus and current professor and head of the Department of Animal and Dairy Science at the University of Georgia, focused a portion of his presentation on the significant impact that proper feed bunk management has on feed conversion, prevention of acidosis, and overall profitability. Here, in less than eight minutes, Dr. Fluharty explains why bunk management is so important. Bunk management <clears throat> involves several things. It involves increasing the frequency of feeding. It involves really gradual diet adaptations. Sometimes it involves feeding complementary grain sources like partial whole shelled corn, partial ground. Keep in mind, it is more critical with the small grains than the least critical with whole shelled corn, but it's still critical just a relative thing. I love bunk management because it allows me to control feed delivery. It reduces human error, it reduces feed wastage, reduces metabolic disorders. Can be used if we limit them a little bit to reduce excessive fatness and it improves feed efficiency because cattle come to the feed bunk when you feed them. I'll show pictures and how this works. So feed bunk management does three things. It maximizes animal performance, it minimizes digestive disorders, but more importantly, it keeps animals eating a consistent amount of feed, and that's critical. And there are a lot of systems out there. I like this one that goes from zero to four. Going for this. They were going for this about 30, 40% of the time were this. It's available, they were going for this. Now, let's look at the information. In this study, if it snowed or there was a weather event that caused that feed to get wet, they went out and they weighed back the feed in the lot B group and they replaced it with an equivalent amount of feed so that the feed wasn't just sitting there stale. Okay, this was a really intensive study from that standpoint. Here's what they found. Lot A, controlled intake versus lot B. There was no difference in feed intake over their 150-day feeding period. But average daily gain under the controlled situation was 3.76 pounds of feed per day versus 2.07. It took 5.38 pounds of feed to put on a pound a day controlling intake, but in lot B it took 9.47. If you're marketing grain through cattle, would you rather be marketing in lot A or lot B? You better like A. Fewer pounds of feed per pound of gain. How can this be? With lot B, there is always feed available. How can that be bad? It doesn't make sense. Until you look at feed intake patterns. When I said if I had cattle that could eat the same intake all the time and I didn't have to adjust it, I would be really happy. It's because 80% of feed intake in ruminants total goes to maintenance. Only about 20% of our feed goes to actual gain. So on an average of 20 pounds over this 55 day period, 80% percent of 20 is 16. That comes in about right here. After those first four days getting on to feed, what percentage of days are they above 16 pounds? All of them. Now, down here, by the way, <clears throat> how many of you think the weather in Ohio is consistent? Okay. Huh? Consistently bad. You know, I love November in Ohio. I really miss November. Moving to Georgia, I miss not knowing whether it's going to be 70 or 30 from Tuesday to Wednesday. That really frustrates me. 
I'm getting used to sunshine, but the weather consistency is really troubling. Okay, here's what happens. On this day one, with plenty of feed, these steers thought it was Thanksgiving. There was more mashed potatoes there than they could hardly look at, but they ate everything. And then next day, they had a bellyache. They were acidic. So they're not hungry that day. The problem is, here's maintenance requirements. All the days under my pointer, they're not meeting their maintenance requirements, which is why it took 9.5 pounds of feed per pound to gain versus 5.4. <clears throat> the goal is to keep consistent intake. Now, how many of you are from a large family? More than three brothers and sisters. Okay. For those of you who are from a large family, if you were the slow eater of the kids, were you the heaviest or the lightest? Yeah, you're the lightest. Same philosophy works with steers. When you feed to just enough feed that they're clearing it up in 23 to 24 hours, when the feed truck comes through, they come to the bunk. They come in waves, but they come. When feed's always there, there is no fear that feed will not be there tomorrow or in six hours. And it causes this overeating and undereating. And this is what we want to avoid. So why was the feed efficiency improved with good bunk management? <clears throat> we reduced maintenance requirements because we reduced stress. We reduced acidosis, so we reduced stress. There was more energy left over, and every day they ate in of their maintenance requirements. We have to keep in mind that we can control how cattle eat. Now, if that bunk were slicked two days in a row and the cattle were nervous, I would not increase feed by more than half a pound per head per day. And I would do that if I'm feeding twice a day by increasing it a quarter pound per head in the morning and a quarter pound in the evening. And then I wouldn't mess around for two more days. I bring them up really slowly, even if I think they're being a little bit underfed because I don't want to create that period where I give them too much and they drop. When you're working with large commercial feedlots, crashes occur when cattle are increased two days in a row, even relatively small increases, because that second day, some cattle overeat. And the next day, there are hungry cattle from that prior day, and they overeat, and then the whole pen crashes about day three. We want consistency. <clears throat>